listen, we worked this out before. There is no guest star fee, or I'll have to call you back. Well, yes, it is WrestleMania weekend. And yes, I will murder anybody who tries to interrupt me on Sunday. I'd like to talk about something that's been angering me a little bit. There are people in this world, grown-ass men and women with jobs, who apparently wake up every day, put on their pants, go to a job. Dear God, some of them I'm sure have procreated that believe that the earth we live on is flat. And while this angers me beyond my possible ability to fully communicate, it also makes me happy because no matter what mistakes I make in life, no matter what horrible decisions I ever make, I will never, ever be stupid enough to believe that. So you might think this is medication in here, but it's actually butterscotch candy, which can be medication if you think about it. Now we're going to go to Hose in the Car, and he's going to give an opinion piece about gathering information before you run off half-cocked with an uninformed opinion and make an ass of yourself. How many of you have played Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, for the NES? Okay, not many of you, I suppose. Oh well. There's a fairly popular meme-ish sort of thing where in the second village that you visit, you walk into a house... And you walk up to this guy, and instead of telling you that you need to go here to get this item, or that you need to kill this guy over here in order to do this, or that this is what goes on, blah, 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 blah. All he says is, I am error. And everybody laughs. I laughed about it when I was a kid. My brother thought it was hysterical. Everything Goes Cold wrote a song with that title and everything. There'll be a link in the description. That's an excellent band that you should listen to. Anyways, you hear a lot of people that'll talk about that and be like, Oh, you go into this house and that's all he says is, I am error. That's funny. Why would they do something that useless and stupid? <laughs> because on the surface of it, it seems like that's all that is. Oh, he says, I am error, and then you go on with your life. If you actually play the game a little bit further, and you walk into what I believe is the fourth town, you run into a guy that says something along the lines of, Tell Error of Ruto, which is the town that Error lives in, Tell Error of Ruto that I sent you. And if you go back there and you talk to him again, he actually gives you a very important clue as far as how you need to proceed in the game. So what is the moral of this story? We live in a society where it's very easy to get bad information and then just believe it and run off with it, and even worse, take action on it. That's not a good idea. Gather some information. Establish sources that you trust. Not because they're the major media or because they're this person or that person or they've been around for this long. Observe some people. Figure out who is consistently correct in what they say. And then listen to them. And then fact check them. Because for the love of God, we do not need a bunch of I am error people running around in the world. Hi, I'm Hose's crappy idea of a hand puppet. Listen, this isn't going to work if that's how you're going to act, okay? Oh my! A belligerent hand puppet! That's really, really creative! I gotta hand it to you there! Would you shut up? Yeah, you could at least take the ring off. You could at least shut up. <laughs> That's right. Super Mario Run is out for Android. And I'd like to highly recommend it to anyone who's ever been a fan of Mario games. It's got a very classic feel with some innovative controls. And you actually can play it with one hand as they keep insisting in the advertisements. You can go through the major worlds pretty quickly, but there's a lot of replay value, a lot of player versus player kind of stuff. Right now, there's a Golden Goomba event going on. 
If you kill a bunch of them, you can get free stuff. And then there's a weird little Mario Sim City thing where you can build your own Mushroom Kingdom, which gives you some bonuses for the game, and it's a nice little satisfaction of setting up your own little Mario world. I'd like to read a few things uh, that have popped up on my memories from Facebook. I posted this a year ago. Things of which I am actually certain. Chinese food is awesome. Livewire is the best Mountain Dew. The Oxford comma is the correct usage. Look it up. Jesus kicks ass. And Tim Burton must be stopped. The world has always seemed to me to be extremely inconsistent in its demands and desires. I've determined that this is because I'm periodically bumped sideways into alternate realities, and what was true yesterday is not true today and may not be true tomorrow. I think this explains that whole Mandela effect thing, because in my personal timeline, Andy Griffith has died five times. The pen is mightier than the sword. Especially when it has ten different colors. But you have to remember that it's an exotic weapon, and as such you're going to have to be prepared to spend some skill points to be able to wield it properly. Now we're going to go to a brand new segment on Hose Does Stuff. Okay, fine, I know they're all new. Who invited you anyway? This is hopefully going to be a recurring theme because, as I mentioned in the last video, I want to talk about cookies. Specifically of the O-R-E-O -E variety. Now, I'd like to know if this is necessary. And actually, there's an even more important question. At what point does it cease to be an Oreo? Did some guy and his dog just hijack my podcast? The Oreo cookie has been beloved by youth and adults alike ever since its inception in whatever year it was. Do your own research. I'm providing a free service here. And originally, all we had was the regular Oreo and then the double stuff, which was fine. I'm just here to say they've gotten completely out of hand. Now, sure, you have things like the mint Oreo, which is good. Chocolate and mint together are always an excellent combination. They have the chocolate chocolate ones, which, quite frankly, I like so much, I didn't even hang on to them to do the video. Oops. What I'd like to do is take a look at exactly how depraved they've gotten. Key lime pie? Okay. First of all, there's no chocolate here, and I'm very dubious on anything that claims to be an Oreo cookie and doesn't have chocolate cookies in it. That's just how I am, I suppose. The thing that angers me most about these is not even that it's a s'mores Oreo. It's that they passed up the perfect chance just to call it a s'moreo. Limited edition, ooh. If you look really close, there's like white cream in there and chocolate cream. I don't know how I feel about that. It's okay, it has a vaguely s'mores taste to it, but it reminds me of s'mores Pop-Tarts. And that reminds me of when I was in 11th grade and I had to have my wisdom teeth out, and God, that was a horrible experience, so. Now that I've eaten a bunch of cookies, I feel like I need a drink. And this is going to be the segment of the show where I decide to offend Jesus.
that's right, I just mixed Coke and Pepsi together and I drank it. <laughs> Disregard the constabulary. Can I just point something out? When I discovered Red's Apple Ale, it changed the way I consume alcohol. This is delicious. They also have green apple, which is also delicious. And strawberry, which is quite nice. You know what else they have? Peach. Peach, peach, peach. This stuff is so good, I'm actually bartering it for Wisconsin cheese. That should tell you exactly how much esteem I hold it in. Yes, I drink out of plastic cruets. You want to fight about it? So that's all I have for today. I want to give a special thank you to my good friend John Zaremba, who basically has been encouraging me to resume making videos to the point of harassment. Not sure if this is exactly what he wanted, but uh, thanks, buddy. I'd like to uh, promote his CD, Promontory, which is available on his website, johnzaremba.com. There'll be a link down there for people who might not know how to spell that or who might just be sick and tired of uh, actually typing URLs these days, or may actually have forgotten because we live in a society where you don't have to do anything for yourself. This particular CD is one of the most excellent examples of audio storytelling I've ever heard. Basically tells a rather violent and satisfying story of how an individual can overcome a mindless horde. I highly recommend it. You didn't think this was real, did you?